All right, guys, I want to read chapter two of Turgenev's First Love. I actually enjoyed chapter two because uh, I guess I'm a lonely man, so we'll see. I was in the habit of wandering about our garden every evening with a gun looking for crows. I had an inveterate loathing for these wary, cunning, and predatory birds. On the day in question, I strolled as usual into the garden and having scoured every walk in vain, the crows knew me and only called harshly now and then from afar. I happened to come near the low fence which divided our property from the narrow strip of garden which ran to the right beyond the lodge and belonged to it. I was walking with my head bowed when suddenly I heard the sound of voices. I looked across the fence and stood transfixed. A strange sight met my gaze. A few paces from me, on a lawn flanked by green raspberry canes, stood a tall slender girl in a striped pink dress with a white kerchief on her head. Four young men clustered around her, and she was tapping them one by one on the forehead with those small gray flowers. I do not know their name, but they are well known to children. These flowers form little bags and burst loudly if you strike them against anything hard. The young men offered their forehead so eagerly, and there was in the girl's movements, I saw her in profile, something so enchanting, imperious, and caressing, so mocking and charming that I nearly cried out with wonder and delight and and should, I suppose, at that moment have given everything in the world to have those lovely fingers tap my forehead too. My rifle slipped to the grass. I forgot everything. My eyes devoured the graceful figure, the lovely neck, the beautiful arms, the slightly disheveled fair hair under the white kerchief, and the half-closed perceptive eye, the lashes, the soft cheek beneath them. Young man, hey, young man, suddenly cried a voice near me. Is it proper to stare at unknown young ladies like that? I started violently and almost fainted. Near me, on the other side of the fence, stood a man with close-cropped, dark hair, looking at me ironically. At the same moment, the girl, too, turned towards me. I saw large gray eyes in a bright, lively face, and suddenly this face began to quiver and laugh. There was a gleam of white teeth, a droll lift of the eyebrows. I blushed terribly, snatched up my gun, and pursued by resonant but not unkind laughter, fled to my room threw myself on the bed and covered my face with my hands. My heart leaped within me. I felt very ashamed and unusually gay. I was extraordinarily excited. Meaning he was happy gay, like the happy gay. After a rest, I combed my hair, brushed myself, and came down to tea. The image of the young girl floated before me. My heart was leaping no longer, but felt somehow deliciously constricted. What is the matter with you, my father asked suddenly. Shot a crow? I nearly told him everything, but checked the impulse and only smiled to myself. As I was going to bed without quite knowing why, I spun round two or three times on one foot. Then I put pomade on my hair, laid down and slept like a top all night. Before morning, I woke up for an instant, lifted my head, looked around me in ecstasy, and fell asleep again. <laughs> That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. I love it. I love it. I remember he's only 16, so it's like his manly in love just super excited like that's what a woman will do to a man that's what a female will do for a male 